What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Michael Knapp Fishing. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I greatly appreciate you all tuning in. Go down there and hit that notification button and uh, tur or turn on or hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Uh, we do a Tackle Warehouse gift card from time to time for you all to get some free money to be able to uh, go spend at Tackle Warehouse on my dime. Today's video, we're talking about jigs. Uh, I know everybody knows I, I, I love jigs. I talk about jigs an awful lot, but uh, we're going to talk today in depth about the jig itself, not fishing it, all that jazz, but we're going to talk about what makes a good jig. Um, there's thousands of jigs out on the market. Everybody knows I have my own signature series that I fish by Lit Creek Custom Lures, but that's what we're going to dive in today. I'm going to show you all why I feel like my jig is one of the best jigs out there and what makes it so perfect. And if you can find one like it, that's what you need to fish. So let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, so 2019, I signed on with Lit Creek Custom Lures, and Tim Bittner is the owner, and he knew how much of a jig fanatic I was, and I was blessed enough that he gave me my own uh, signature series jig rods, or I'm sorry, jig uh, baits. So this is one of my signature series jigs. This is the uh, purple and black, black and purple, that I, uh, I really enjoy throwing, uh, especially on Cherokee. Um, there's a little secret for y'all. Purple works really well on Cherokee, for those of you who didn't know. Uh, I feel like most people do know that, though. So here are a few things that we're going to look at as far as what makes a high-quality jig. And the very first thing that you want to look at in a jig is the hook. And I know a lot of people are like, well, no crap, that just makes sense. But I'm being serious here. You need to look at the jig. You know, a lot of people these days are putting these massive shark hooks in them. You know, they're wanting to run five aught, six aught, seven hook, seven aught hooks. And I just, I don't feel the need for that. It, it, it creates a much more difficult situation for you to be able to bury that hook into those fish. So I run, this is a three aught VMC jig hook. Um, it's very stout, like I, you can see I can't, I mean I can move it a little bit, but not a whole lot. Very stout hook. So that's what you want to look for first, is a good hook. Now, after the hook, you want to move your way down. You've got your hook, and you want to look at your hook keeper here. Now, there's going to be different kinds of hook keepers. Um, some of them have the wire thing down the back, the kind of hook down. Um, those are good keepers as well. I like those, um, but I like this one a little bit better. So the way this one works is you just slide your plastic up and then the hook keeper here buries into the plastic. It, it's very simple. I know most people like this, this is, you know, basic knowledge 101, but we're doing this for the people that maybe don't know how to fish a jig quite as well as we do. So. The cool thing about this, and the reason why I like this one so much, is I will bring that plastic all the way up, and I'll stop right here, right before I get back onto the lead. And then I will place a dab of super glue on the lead here. And then I'll slide that bait over, push it up on there really well, and let that super glue really get down in there. Don't, you know, don't flip this thing five seconds after you put that super glue on there. Give it about 30 seconds, let that super glue really make good contact with that bait, and then it is gonna last you so much longer. So, now that we're done with the hook keeper, th this is the hook keeper that I really harp on, that I really like. Next up is, and I know this is gonna be a lot of debate, wire tied versus rubber bands. Uh, You know, I fished, a lot of jigs before I got to the Lit Creek Custom Lures jigs. And all of those jigs that I fished, I'm struggling to get this moved over the way I want it. All of the jigs that I fished before this had the rubber bands on them. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I you know, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say there's something wrong with that. And you, you know, it, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna bash anybody. I'll never bash anybody's company. But for me personally, 
wire tied is where it's at. This wire tie here is going to outlast your jig strands, period. It just is. If you have a rubber band on there, that rubber band's gonna dry rot, it's gonna slip, it's not on there very tight. It doesn't allow it to have the longevity that you may need out of your jig. Now, yes, it's going to allow you to be able to have the, the ease of switching skirts in and out, but you know, if, if you're like me, like most anglers, most professional anglers, they don't have, you know, 30, 40 different colors. You know, if we're talking jigs, we're talking Gerald Swindle, he's got brown and black and blue. Those are his only jig colors he has. I have I have a total of eight jig colors. Um, not because I needed eight jig colors, but I like the way they looked and it's a confidence thing for 90% of anglers is a confidence thing. Because if you go out there right now with this black and purple, but Joe Schmo over here has confidence in a peanut butter and jelly, he's gonna do better with a peanut butter and jelly than he will with a black and purple, even though they're almost identical colors. Because he's got more confidence in that peanut butter and jelly. So it's all about a confidence thing. And that's why we made as many colors as we did, because we want everybody to be able to get exactly what they want and have the confidence they need to have. So after the wire tied, we're gonna look at the skirt itself. You want the skirt to be full, and I mean full. You don't, I don't like these dinky little skirts that only have one tab, maybe two tabs. This is three tabs of skirt material. There's a lot of skirt material on there. When it falls in the water like this, it's gonna really puff out very nicely, and it's just gonna kinda sit there and look good. The, the uh, skirt material is gonna be flowing around, and it just looks, so much better when there's more material out there. It definitely makes it look more natural and it's gonna give off a little bit more appearance to them. And it's actually gonna get you bigger bites. You know, the, the jig is well known as a big fish bait. Um, and I'm a firm believer that if it's got more skirt material, more flowing motion to it, that you're gonna get bigger, better quality bites off of it. So the last component of a jig and perhaps the most important component of the jig that you need to look at is your keeper. Or I'm sorry, not your keeper, your, um, what is this thing called? Your brush guard, there it is. I, I don't know why I couldn't think of that all of a sudden. Your brush guard. Uh, it's traditionally a heavy wire material of some kind. Uh, it's very coarse, uh, you see it doesn't give very easily. This is what's gonna keep your jig weedless. Now, what are we looking for in a good high quality jig with a good high quality brush keeper? You want a brush keeper that is going to come over your jig enough that it's going to really allow you to come through your cover. Now, if you've got a jig that the keeper is way up here or it's short and it's actually cut off up here, you're asking for problems. You want a keeper that's gonna be long enough that if you were to push it down a little bit, that a hook's not gonna come through there super easily and penetrate into say a log or rock or anything like that. But if a fish were to grab it like so and bite on it, there's still enough pressure to be able to get it through the hook keeper and be able to really set it into the top of its mount. Well, in theory, it should be in the top of the mouth, but you'll take it wherever you can get it, right? There's a lot of jigs on the market that these brush keepers are not very, or brush guards, I don't know why I keep calling them brush keeper. I don't know why, or these brush guards, they're, they're high up, they're shorter, they're not really where they need to be. Now, I know a lot of people, including Tim Bittner, our, the owner of Lick Creek Custom Lures, he likes to cut his a little bit of an angle, shorten it up a little bit. I don't like that. I like the long guard like this. I feel as though it gives you a little bit more protection, a little bit more coverage, and it's gonna really be able to allow you to come through the thickest, the thicket of things, and you're not gonna get hung up quite as easily as you would with a shorter or an angled jig um, brush, brush guard. I don't know why I'm struggling saying that word. Anyway, if you guys like these videos, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down in the comment section below. You know, the jig is something that I, I thoroughly enjoy throwing. Um, 
The, the, a jig is on my deck 24-7, 365 days a year. The jig has no water temperature limiter. It'll catch fish from ice all the way up until that, that water temperature is boiling. Now, obviously not boiling, but you get what I'm saying. When it's hotter and hot in the middle of summer, this is still going to catch fish. Um, that's, that's why I like throwing it as much as I do. Um, and, and I have a lot of faith in them. And like we talked about earlier, guys, it's all about having confidence in a bait. And if you can get confidence on something like a jig, you're going to be really, really well off. Uh, anyway, guys, if, if y'all have any questions about this, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on uh, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere. Leave me a comment down there. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know, you know, what kind of jigs do y'all throw? What do y'all like? If you like bigger hooks, little hooks, whatever, uh, just comment down there. I enjoy talking to you guys. If you have any requests for these Tackle Tip Tuesdays, modifications, whatever we're calling them, because we're just kind of all around the place um we're gonna have some knot videos coming up i promised for a long time that we were gonna do knots um i'm still in the process of figuring out how we're gonna film that so that you all can best see it but uh we are going to do that sooner or later i'm hoping that's going to be coming up in the next few weeks so anyway guys like button subscribe button comment notifications on take care guys